extinction level event that killed off the dinosaur 66 million years ago also wiped out life in Antarctica. How it happened? We know we've had a lot of earth changes. We even had, uh, I posted up a video yesterday about the tipping of the earth about 84 million years ago, the Cretaceous period. And uh, of course, we had a tremendous amount of earth changes and upheaval with the asteroid impact 66 million years ago in the Yucatan Peninsula. Two thirds of life on earth had been wiped out. A lot of uh, vegetation burned up. And of course, uh, the video before this one, you'll see the primates' ancestors left trees, surviving dinosaurs, asteroid impact about 66 million years ago as well. So we had a, a very big change in um, fauna and flora from that extinction level event. And this is by University of Leeds, James Witts, on the conversation. What happened? We know that, that Antarctica, even by Admiral Richard Byrd, he had two expeditions there. He said that there were there was so much coal in Antarctica that it could supply the Earth for three to four hundred years. There were areas, he said, that were ice-free. Now, here, Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction, that's the uh, CPG mass extinction event of 66 million years ago, was the most recent of five similar crises to have devastated life on Earth over the last 540 million years. That rapidly killed off an estimated 76% of species around the globe. I said about three quarters, okay, I said two, what did, oh yeah, three quarters, including most famously, of course, the dinosaur extinction. But exactly how this event affected different areas of the globe has not been entirely understood. Some scientists have suggested that creatures living at high altitudes could have been sheltered from the worst effects of the mass extinction. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Now we also had a comet impact. I just want to refer to that about uh, 14,000 years ago. That was the Clovis Comet that hit our Earth as well about 14,000 years ago and did away with the Clovis culture. And uh, they originally thought that uh, the comet only hit in uh, North America. Then they found that uh, it hit on the Northern Hemisphere. It was uh, cut into various pieces about a mile wide each piece. But they also found that it did impact the Southern Hemisphere as well. And of course, it... Uh, did away with a lot of for fauna and flora, the mammoths and the giant sloths, as we know. Now, this is the uh, 66 million years ago. Exactly how this event affected different areas of the globe has not been entirely understood. Now, the new research published in the journal Nature Communications reveals that this was not the case. Even marine mollusks in Antarctica were affected by that asteroid impact 66 million years ago. Scientists are still debating what caused the extinction. Many researchers believe it was a sudden crisis triggered by the catastrophic asteroid impact. Let's remember we're talking about Antarctica. Antarctica was originally thought to have 46 volcanoes. Another 100 have been found. One of them that is uh, currently, of course, in activity is the Mount Erebus on the west coast of Antarctica. And uh, Antarctica has uh, uh, an area of uh, quite a lot of volcanoes, 100, almost 150. And these 100 have been recently found. Now, the uh, catastrophic asteroid impact, this formed a 200 kilometer Chicxulub crater, today buried off the Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It also produced a thin layer of rock found all over the world, known as the KPG boundary. So this fallout layer is rich in debris from the asteroid impact and an element called iridium. It's rare on Earth, but is commonplace in space rocks. It coincides with many of the extinctions in the fossil records to within 32,000 years, a geological blink of an eye. 
Others suggest a more gradual extinction occurred related to natural climate and sea level changes over millions of years, massive volcanic outpourings in what is now continental India, the Deccan traps, may also have contributed by emitting climate changing gases into the atmosphere. Scientists recently dated the remains of these huge eruptions, and they discovered that they occurred in a 700,000 year period around the KPG boundary. There are even suggestions that the asteroid impact may have intensified the volcanism in a deadly one-two punch. So the asteroid strike impacted our Earth, and this, of course, caused tremendous heat and uh, jostling of the Earth's crust to the point where uh, a lot of volcanic activity was going on around the world. And in this case, obviously, also in Antarctica. So they also found Antarctica's well-preserved fossils, so that some of them being the uh, clamshells that we see here. These are fossil clamshells of Antarctica dated from the 66 million years ago asteroid impact. Very pristine looking, aren't they? So the research focused on Seymour Island, the site which has been described as the Rosetta Stone of Antarctic paleontology. It's a small island less than 20 kilometers across. It's located to the east of the Antarctic Peninsula. The rocks here preserve an amazing fossil record of marine and terrestrial life dating back to around 69 million years to 35 million years ago. Because Seymour Island is at such high altitudes, no plants grow there, so rocks and fossils are beautifully preserved and exposed for study. The rocks we examined and collected fossils from were originally deposited in shallow water due to the warmer global climates of the time. Cretaceous Antarctica, while located over the South Pole, was covered in rain forests and probably looked similar to parts of modern South America or even New Zealand. The lush green New Zealand mountains or South America, lush covered rainforests. You can imagine. Now, the empty oceans in total, I examined over 6,000 fossils collected by my colleagues during field trips to Seymour Island, dating as being 69 million to 65 and a half million years old. Our goal was to assess how marine biodiversity changed before, during, and after the extinction event in Antarctica. We also looked at findings by other scientists to enable us to compare data from marine fossils with evidence for how the local climate and environments change through time. We focused on the fossil records of mollusks, marine creatures that naturally secrete a hard shell, which is easily preserved in the fossil record. Three main groups of mollusks were presented in the late Cretaceous Paleogene rocks on Seymour Island. The bivalves, those are the clams, the gastropods are the marine snails, and the ammonites, distant relatives of modern squids and octopus with a hard shell. We also looked at the fossils of other Cretaceous, such as shark, other creatures such as sharks and marine reptiles that would have been closer to the top of the food chain, but which do not tend to preserve quite as frequently as fossils. Our results revealed that while there was some fluctuation in the diversity of species, rates of extinction were generally low until an apparently sudden extinction event in the layer right below the KPG boundary where 65 to 70 percent of species disappeared. Many common fossils extend to directly beneath the layer of rock containing evidence for the asteroid impact and several disappeared just above suggesting they survived initially but they were doomed to extinction in the strange empty oceans following the event. Crucially, we did find evidence for climate and environmental changes in Antarctica before and after the extinction, sea level changes and climate warming and cooling, some of which may be related to the eruption of the Deccan traps. But these events do not seem to coincide with any significant decline in species numbers or evidence for collapse of the marine ecosystem prior to the KPG boundary. Importantly, the percentage of marine species that disappeared on Seymour Island 
is actually the same as seen at KBG PG boundary sites at low altitudes, including the event was just as severe all over the world 66 million years ago. Worldwide, this, along with how suddenly the extinction seems to have occurred, provides support for the asteroid impact hypothesis. So you can imagine what took place on the Earth 66 million years ago. We now want to look at how life in Antarctica bounced back after the mass extinction. Did it take millions of years for ecosystems to recover, or did it happen much more rapidly? What happened to the species that survived? We know that most groups of animals that dominate modern ecosystems on Earth today, such as mammals, can trace the roots of their current success back to this extinction event. They were able to replace previously successful groups such as the dinosaurs that disappeared. Can we see the same pattern for different groups of animals that lived at high altitudes? This is from the conversation, Creative Commons, it's on phys.org. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.